Anyway, welcome everyone. Um, good afternoon. And for those of you who don't know me, my name is Lorraine Justice, and I'm the new dean of the College of Information Arts and Sciences. And um, imaging arts and sciences. <laughs> I'm jet lagged, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I want to tell you that uh, it was really great to have uh, two of our presenters today come in. And I want to give special credit to Twyla, uh, our assist, associate dean, who has worked diligently on this. And she did an exceptional job uh, working to get funding and talking with people across the RIT and Rochester community. So, Twyla. Thanks. Okay, so thank you for joining us at this afternoon's presentation entitled Memory as a Medicine, featuring Radcliffe Bailey. RIT is known around the world for its educational programs and facilities. The College of Imaging Arts and Sciences integrates and experiments with mixed media through its various schools of art, American crafts, design, film, animation, photography, and print media, as well as our foundations program. The topic of this afternoon's lecture will be of utmost interest to us as Mr. Bailey's work utilizing mixed media is very relevant to the current focus on new forms of work in CIAS. We're pleased to have Mr. Bailey here to discuss his fascinating work and career with all of us today. At this time, I would like to introduce Professor Carol Woodlock, Administrative Chair of the School of Art, to introduce our speaker. Thank you. Good afternoon. It is my pleasure, very much my pleasure, to uh, welcome Radcliffe and uh, to share with you just a little insight uh, in talking with him at lunch. His sensitivity to artistic practice and process that he will share with you today is passionate, um, it's engaging, and it's so contemporary and relevant. I'm happy that he's here to share that with us. Uh, his work is engaging, it's beautiful, it's sophisticated, and it's work that you're drawn to and you wish that you could keep looking at again and again. So we welcome you, Radcliffe. Uh, thank you for coming to RIT, and thank you for sharing your work and your insights with us. I welcome Radcliffe Bailey. Can you hear me? Okay, cool. All right, I'll start. Um, uh -oh. I'm gonna go back to the image. I might need help with the image real quick. I wanna go to the first image. Yeah. Screen lights. Gotcha. Well, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. <laughs> um, I, were, I was originally born in New Jersey, born in South Jersey. Um, my parents moved to Atlanta, Georgia when I was at the age of five. And when they moved to Atlanta, I think it was like, I'm trying to think it was like 73, 73, and they were doing the opposite migration um, my family on my, um, on my father's side were a part of the Underground Railroad. Um, and they ended up going to New Jersey, uh, met some Quakers in New Jersey. They were on their way to Canada, but they stopped. Um, and so they lived in South Jersey. Um, history has always been very important in my work. Um, I say that to say because 
a lot of it is a lot of, a lot of history that I don't know, I'm fascinated with. Um, like take for instance, the photographs that are on, on, the, um, on the screen are photographs that were given to me by my grandmother. My grandmother gave me close to maybe 400 photographs right before she died, but she gave them to me right before I finished um, art school. And it, I guess it had such a profound um, influence to me. Well, I'll tell you a story. The story started was pretty much my mom. Every Christmas, we would show up and we would go to Virginia and visit my grandparents in Virginia. And when we show up, uh, my mom and her sisters, they all sit around the table and they have conversations talking about their experiences and what has happened in the past year. And I remember just sitting there doodling at the table and my grandmother went in the back and she came out with this old family photo album. She gave it to me um, right before she died. And so I felt it was my job to um, incorporate those images within my work. So I had close to 400 photographs, and a lot of them were tintypes. And you know, a lot of people think that you know, because I live in Atlanta, uh, that these images may have been from the south, but these images are actually from the north. Um, this is my studio. Um, I work on maybe 30 things at once, because I, I, I don't know. I feel like I, one thing I feel, I feel as like if I have like seven different people inside of me, and they work all seven different types of ways, and I hope they can make seven different types of income. Um, and, and the number seven is real important for me because I never knew when to stop, so I decided I'm going to stop on the seventh layer. And sometimes the seven layers are actually seven physical layers, or sometimes it's seven layers of thought. And some of these, the, some of the materials, I use acrylic to Georgia clay to rum. Um, my use of photography has been an important part. That's from their earlier photographs. Um, so these are some of the earlier photographs that were given to me by my grandmother. Let me just show you studio. And I flipped that. That was my studio about uh, the ones before. That was my studio about maybe uh, 10 years ago, eight years ago. And this is my studio now. Um, that's a music stand that I'm working on right now. I, I thought that I should incorporate some new stuff in. And so it's a music stand, but the music stand itself is 10 feet tall. And I'm trying to make music. Uh, I'm thinking about music to the cosmos. I'm dealing with Sun Ra. And so it's like this glittery screen over top of a big music stand that I replicated. So my earlier work was really about these layers and different thoughts. And this is called Mer The Magic City. It was based around a family member who was a preacher, but then also Sun Ra, but then also Birmingham, and the perceptions of a black cat to be negative, um, African practice, those things to be negative, da da da. Uh, the dots on the, um, where you see the diamond shape on the, on the door, that came from, um, a church in Savannah, Georgia. And basically in Savannah, Georgia, to um, this church was a part of the Underground Railroad, but they designed the floors in the bottom of the church where some of the runaway slaves would hide for ventilation for them, but also ventilation for the church. So it's in this kind of diamond shape. Um, a lot of it dealing with crawl, um, crossroads and um, things like that. And the BBB stands for Birmingham Black Barons. One of my first passions was to play baseball. And so I draw those references to I'm, I'm showing older stuff. I hate showing older work. I would prefer to show recent work. Can you hear me? OK. Um, this is called Altar for Four. It's based on the four girls that died in the church bombing. Um, I did this in 92. and. What you have is that, that the pieces adorned by fire hoses. And I was thinking about the fire hoses used against people, but then I was also um, taking another twist to it, thinking about female de deities relating around water. But then also I'm using materials from like burnt down houses. Uh, I have railroad tracks over, 
over up under the piece, which was dealing with the divide between people. And actually how I learned about the incident was through John Coltrane's music, a uh, piece called, uh, it was based on Birmingham. I remember hearing this music and it put me in such a mood. So pretty much what this piece itself is that you hear a recording of John Coltrane's piece um, playing. But then also there are things like the, uh, the wreaths are made out of fire hoses. Um, this is called Oceanic Beloved, and it's based on my mother, my mother being a school teacher and carrying the weight of all these kids above her. Um, it, there are other things that were if, within the piece that are really like for my work at this time, I was fascinated trying to figure out my makeup as an artist. One of the things I wanted to know was my DNA as an artist. And so I did not know it at the time, but I started studying and using African art. Um, some of the practices within the work and some of those amongst those people um, from Guinea to Sierra Leone and then to later on to do my DNA and find out that my mother's side was from that part um, was important. It felt good to me to know that I was um, getting close. It's called Mingus Mingus, and if anything, you know, as I talked about my first passion to play baseball, I kept thinking that if there was a baseball player doing the Negro League baseball teams, uh, that um, jazz musician, it would have been um, Charles Mingus playing catcher. And so it's really based on Charles Mingus, but then also like um, thinking about the baseball players and the musicians traveling the same routes. Um, the net, the upright, is made out of plow handles. And I was thinking about 40 acres and a mule promises. And this is another piece that's based on Jimi Hendrix. Um, Jimi Hendrix, you know, hey, when he put that guitar on fire, but this door itself was taken from the Fourth Ward in Houston from the shotgun houses in Houston, Texas. Um, and it was said that one of the houses was owned by Lightning Hopkins, and I felt that the blues musicians, how they talk about crossroads and the door, da da da, it all connects for me. I don't even talk about that one. Oh, I say something about this one. I'm, I'm not a painting for me is like playing chess. Uh, I like to lose. I'm always losing. I'm not good at it. But the purpose is for me is like I like to be in difficult situations so I can solve problems. My my studios become like that place, like a church to me. You know, I'm not a religious person, but I'm a spiritual person. But whenever I have to solve problems, I go to the studio. So basically, I use colors that don't necessarily work together on purpose and to make them eventually work together. Um, this is called Four Corners, based on Thelonious Monk. Um, the piano tops, there are four piano tops going um, within each other, but there's also like a reference towards like quilt making. I've always been fascinated with the different Af African practice throughout the southern parts of the United States. Quilt making I thought was interesting. I'm just trying to draw a connection between that. But, but the patterns are based on quilts, but it's also based on space. Um, the white dots or the constellations are made out of thimbles. This is Denmark Vesey meets Shango, and Shango is dealing with, well, I was basically dealing with his revolts during slavery, but um, dealing with Shango being a Yoruba deity, um, and some of his attributes are like, more like thunder, lightning. And so what I have is like an ax handle that was used to cut tobacco, reflected on the back of the photograph, reflected on the photograph, that box within the photograph, which is covered with a mirror-like surface, which shows a double side head of Shango. And it's painted with Georgia clay. This is one I use rum. And the railroad tracks are a reference to migration of people, but my, my father was a railroad engineer. And so him being a railroad engineer, I just remember as a kid, we would, I remember we'd catch a train from Atlanta. It was called the um, Southern Crescent. We would catch it at 7, 7 p.m. And sometime around 8 in the morning, we would end up in Charlottesville, Virginia. And some of those memories kind of strike in my mind. And part of it, I think, is what, which, was, which what I was fascinated was thinking about the routes of my family members who migrated from the south to the north and thinking about those same routes and traveling by night. 
Um, this is, I don't really talk about this one that much, but this is a piece based on Fela. Um, I was a part of a show that was, um, a traveling show that was based on Fela and you know, artists who had been influenced by Fela's music. And I always thought he was a quintessential artist because he had politics and he had a bunch of things that were interwoven within his music where it was more, it was more about something else. It was about what wasn't right and he was pointing it out. And I always felt that was fascinating. Um, this is called Black Star Line, based on Marcus Garvey. Um, also, on my father's side, there were Garveyites, and so um, I use that. I think about Marcus Garvey. I don't necessarily, um, the ships didn't really make it, da da da. He wanted to go back and forth to Africa, didn't really work, but his thoughts um, kind of live today, and it was very progressive for that time. And so I'm very, this, this is all based on Marcus Garvey. Um, Photographs, I go out and photograph of the moon when it's full. Um, there's photographs of the ocean and routes. This is one that was really based on that whole traveling, of traveling by night. Uh -oh. uh, this is a body work where I, when I was in college, I. I was studying um, sculpture. But the thing about it was I was more interested in doing installations, but installations are so difficult to sell. <laughs> so I, uh, after making my work, I came to a point where I felt more comfortable where I can occupy space within that way. And so I started, went back to doing my installations and cross between my sculpture and installations. When I was, when I was in school, I went to Atlanta College of Art and I was a sculpture major but I painted pretty much when I finished because it was easier to move a painting. Um, so this is an installation I did called Spiritual Migration. Uh, and the walls are painted green. That green came from my grandfather. My grandfather, my grandmother allowed my grandfather to have this one room in the house. In this one room, my grandfather uh, made birdhouses. And he would always talk about the birds will tell you when the weather changes and people will too. And there was a particular green that he painted on the wall. So as a certain layer or symbol that I use within my work is that actual mint color green. On that wall, it's like um, you can't see it, but there's names of bodies of water are all around the world, but then also different places in space. And when you walk in this room, you hear the sounds of um, the ocean. And I jokingly said that I put in water from the Mississippi inside the bottles. And I remember when my show traveled, it went to Texas. And when it was in Texas on the opening night, it had the day, I guess about two weeks before, it had rained nonstop. And then the day of my opening, the water came inside the gallery, and the gallery had to be shut down. And so they invited me back again, but they put me upstairs. Uh oh. Uh oh, am I doing something? So this was, um, so in the same installation, here's sounds of the ocean. As you came around the sides, you um, heard sounds of, the tra sounds of trains and basically a silk screen on the wall. And I was imitating my daughter's drawings. Um, and I was dealing with the migration of music. There it goes again. Oh, I see. Um, and so as you come in this room, you have the smells of tobacco. Basically, I use tobacco. And so you have the, sound, the smell of tobacco in this, on this side of the room. But then also, like, I had the sounds of insects and the smell of tobacco. So on the wall, I had different dates and times. And those were places of revolts. Um, and still using those old photographs, but trying to find a new way to use it. So I started, you know, doing more so the installation. Um, this one is more like a self-portrait, self-portrait of an artist. But uh, you know, I always see like artists as more like tricksters in a way. And so there are certain symbols, like number three, refer to. Well, I'm referring to Legba, um, top hat, uh, twisted roots. Uh, jelly beans and hot peppers and a machete. And 
the thing about it, if you look at the frames themselves, one thing I was fascinated with was, was African art. I was fascinated with the patina on the work, the age, what it carried. But then also, I looked at my grandmother. My grandmother liked old furniture, and she would refinish the old furniture with this kind of dark patina. And so those are some of the thoughts that I have in mind. So this body of work um, she mentioned earlier about uh, memory as medicine. So I made a body of work that, like, if you look at this, this is not a frame for me, but it's more so a cabinet. And the idea is, like, whenever you get sick, you go to a medicine cabinet and get something to make you feel good. For me, it was more about my memory and past. And so I made, these body, made this body of work where they're pretty much like cabinets. And some of them have mirrors on them, but they're like medicine cabinets. And I have photographs that I printed on glass, and um, you can see palms. Uh, GWC at the top referred to George Washington Carver, and part of the reason why I picked George Washington Carver is because I was always interested in his ways of experimenting. And um, he experimented pretty much like an artist, like he was. Um, he made vases. I saw recently saw a vase that was made out of peanut shells. And it was made out of peanut shells, but he also painted on top of it. Um, this one in particular was painted with indigo. And I was just thinking about indigo using um, as a crop during slavery, but then also thinking about the power, the blue, the blues, um, but the blue, a certain blue that the Yoruba use. Uh, this piece is called Minor. Minor is based on the minor keys of the piano, but it's also, it's like a piano that's made like a fish tank. So the light on it's real bad in photographs, very difficult to photograph, but pretty much over across the top of the piece, there's a blue tint that runs across, and the blue tint shines down over top of um, the field of piano keys, and it appears like uh, space or um, fish tank. It's based on my favorite jazz musicians, uh, Duke Ellington, but then also Sun Ra. This is my studio again. Kind of show you scale. This is called uh, Bluebird from Seventh Sphere. Um, this is based on Charlie Parker. Um, and it's a sign, but in Atlanta, Georgia, there's this, there was this truck depot, and it was called Bluebird Truck Stop, and it was this huge bird. So the bird itself was probably about from me to the other end of the stage. I wanted to get that bird, but it was too heavy and too big, um, so I made a replica of it, and so that's what that is. This is a piece I was doing. I was part of a show that was based on the Black Panthers, and I started... Um, um, doing a body of work that was about um, the breakfast program that the Black Panthers had to feed kids. And using symbols. The show was called The Whole World is Rotten. This is called Bird on Bird. Uh, Bird on Bird is based on Charlie Parker. So how it goes is that the radio plays Charlie Parker's music. And then there's an African finch within that cage. And the an African finch kind of responds to Charlie Parker's music, so he chirps every once in a while. But then the bird poops. And so the bird poops on top of sheep music. And that's a whole other piece within itself. But it's called Bird on Bird. <laughs> this was a. Uh, I was doing an installation based on um, this piece called Cascade, but I'm doing it based on the architecture from plantations, um, the Africanisms that I see within some of the architecture. This is called Indigo Pugilus, and it's uh, done on military blanket, and ideals, battles, and fighting, and wars, and um, but then also based on these flags from Ghana called Safo. Safo. Um, and quilt making it. You know, I'm fascinated. I bounce around. This is one of those seven different people in me. 
And so I had this idea about creating this baseball team since that was the first passion. So I created this league called the, this team called the Liberators. And so you have a mixture of all these different things. But then thinking about, I don't know, thinking about the baseball as a di as a crossroad symbol, a diagram, and um, some of those at, at the top there are arrows, and the arrows are moving based on the slave trade routes. Um, but then these blankets are from different wars. That's a baseball bat uh, that um, it's actually about eight feet tall, 10 feet, eight feet tall. And basically, I wanted to make a baseball bat to beat down all my problems. So that's what that. It's a baseball jersey that was, um, I'm referring to more like a hunter's jacket. And so it's made out of Georgia clay. It's more of a, you know, I'd go back and forth with the cabinets and this is one that's, um, I'm still trying to create a title for it right now, but it's, uh, it's used Georgia clay. I live on Civil War grounds in Atlanta and where I live is uh, based on, um, where I live is called the Battle of Utoy Creek. And so I go back and I get that earth from those grounds or some of those, um, I guess like foxholes. And I use some of that earth because of some of the history that's within that earth, but not the history of the earth before the use, before the civil wars, but the native people, um, those that were, you know, used the earth in that different way. But then I think about Georgia clay as Georgia clay, blood, sacrifice, color red. Um, it has a lot of meanings for me. So this is a um, body of work that's based on recovery and thinking about um, my mother. Um, when I did my DNA and I traced my mother's side to Sierra Leone um, to the Mende and then also um, Guinea to the Baga. And so I started using that art within the work in, in a way. So this is the first piece I did as soon as I found out my DNA and I made a Mende mask right in, the, right in one of the frames of the old photographs. So this is my boat. This is my boat. My boat, this one's called Black Redemption. As one of, you know, I was thinking about like, God, he had these ships and they didn't make it across, but it, it was interesting. I wish he had a strong, a good ship. And so this is a boat that was made for Marcus Garvey. This is another boat. This is my, uh, my cousin's 1950, what was it, 51, 50, 51 Cadillac. And at the same time, when I went to West Africa, my cousin was, he called me and I was, he was in Virginia and I told him I was in West Africa. I was like, yeah, found out our family DNA, da, da, da. I'm here, what you working on, man? He said, oh, I'm working on, he, I forgot the name he called it, um, his car, but he was telling me about his car. He's like, what color should I paint it? And I said, I'm painting my boat black. And he said, I'll paint mine black. So that's where that came from. And so the idea of this is more like, this is a speedboat. And so today, and where we live in today, we can get there so much quicker. And so basically behind the speedboat is a strand of DNA that's blowing up into space. Uh, this is called Door No Return. And this is based on the Door No Return on Gory Island. And basically it's like a painting. I mean, it's a big glittery black screen um, with, uh, where you look out to the sea. And those are two things that I find to be most interesting, though, you know, going in outer space or the deepest ends of the ocean, but also thinking about that passage that people took and their last touch of land. So I, after I came back too, I made a replica of the door and I return. I took the measurements and created it. And I, I took a friend of mine that was a choreographer and she had done like Michael Jackson videos. Her name's Fatima Robinson. And, and I took another friend of mine named Mark Anthony Thompson. He was, he's a musician. He played with um, Bruce Springsteen to Sade. And I thought they were interesting, but when we did our DNA, we had similar DNA. So one of the places we went to was one of, we went to Gory Island because that was one of the ports where in which that region came through. And so I recreated that door no return, but there's a projector of a screen um, on top. And so what you see in the other room is a projection of my friend dancing, but where she dances and twirls almost like a dervish in a way. 
and she twirls and turns into smoke, and then it kind of goes back and forth. All right, so these are my, my attempt to make a tent type. I want to make a contemporary version of a tent type, so basically what I've been doing is printing on top of steel. This is about maybe three feet by two feet. And it's based on a family tree. And so I have a mixture of about maybe 30 of these photographs that all go together. I, I haven't gotten them all shot together, but they're all on different levels, almost like lines of a family tree. These are other things. These are all, this whole body of work was all shown at once. That's why I'm not really saying much about all the images, but they were all shown in context with each other. And I basically took two different um, spaces, a commercial gallery, but then also um, a university space. These are lanterns. This is another piece. I'm showing things that I'm working on at this moment, but this is a railroad lantern that's about maybe eight feet. It's probably about eight feet tall. Um, and I made it based on thinking about somebody who travels by night, but I'm trying to think about what I'm going to do to it right now. So what I'm going to do to it right now is that I am going to put insects from all around the world on the inside, and the idea was that somebody who had traveled the world. Are they sure? OK. <laughs> it's OK. Uh, so this is another lantern. Um, I use the images of family members um, who fought the Civil War. So you see that image on the, on the um, translucent uh, mirror glass photograph printed over top of it. This piece is called Ghost. Basically, it's like a negative of a photograph that I took in my backyard with the woods in the background of me and I held it up and shot it with my iPhone and printed it on a mirror. This is a piece called um, Storm at Sea. And it's based on that Yoruba deity thinking about, you know, Shango and causing the storm at sea. But the piece is made out of piano keys. The piano keys, um, I think when I think about the piano keys, I think about all the music, the one thing that we connect to. I think about before there was a trace of DNA to the crime scenes. I keep thinking music was one of those things. Um, music was a way in which we all connect. Uh, first and foremost, I think I make these things that are so personal that they become universal to a point where our struggle, one, person, one group of people struggle is all people struggle. Um, these are uh, paintings that are done with gouache, and these are, it's called uh, Notes from Elmina. And Notes from Elmina, Elmina was a castle off the coast of Ghana. And I sent, and it's painted on top of classical music. And I think about it in the sense of, a painful subject matter, but to deal with the painful subject matter with color and, and beauty. These are just drawings. Uh, well, these are more like collage paintings. That are, I basically use all the different um, African art from different parts of West Africa that most African Americans come from. And I was thinking about, I use these boats, I use these references to these boats, I mean, some of them are slave ships, some of them are steam, steam ships, you know, some of them are canoes. And for me, whenever I use the image of this long boat, it deals with more so a spiritual migration. All right, so this is, uh, this is strange. And when I was thinking about the subject of DNA, um, my grandparents, when I had these old photographs and I looked through them again, there was this photograph that was in the inside, and it was like my grandparents at a museum, and they were taking pictures of the African art. And this one particular one was in that body, in which, which I thought was interesting, because on, when I did that DNA, it traced the same region as the image of the Baga, and so from Guinea. So, that's why I use this image, but I, I think it's interesting. And then one day I remember, I brought this African deal over to my mom's house, and I remember uh, I asked my mom, just look through the African art, and she started picking, and she picked that one, she picked that same image, that same object. 
Um, this is called From East to West, From South to North, still based on that migration. And some of it's the layouts of cities, be it like DC to um, different um, parts of the world, different villages, and it's a combination of all those different things. All right, so the piece that's in the middle is, uh, is a piece that I worked on, which was based on, based on bees. I remember um, I did a residency, I was uh, teaching this residency. I remember going to residency and the guy, it was part of residency was you go out and you deal with nature. I remember going out and this guy was tell, talking about these bees. He started talking about these bees, these bees, these killer bees. They were bad. He talked about these, one year these killer bees from Africa came in and the honey was bitter, da, da, this. And I heard him talk about these bees and I was like wondering about those bees. I went inside and turned on the TV and the World Cup was on. And they were, and all I could hear was that sound. What do you call it, the zuzophone? And I, yeah, and I, all you heard was that sound. So basically, what you have is a beehive and the sound of the World Cup coming out. This is called Echo. Echo is based on um, Mosque in Mali, Great Mosque in Mali. And um, what you have is Georgia Clay coming out of um, dealing with, uh, I don't know, Georgia Clay coming out of the side of the piece and it's dripping into the shell. It's real loose for me. So this was a piece uh, called Cerebral Caverns, and Cerebral Caverns are based on, like take for instance at the bottom, you have these people talking together and they, they start to question things, and then on the second level they start to congregate, and on third level they start to follow each other and believe in what they're thinking about, and they make that decision at the top level between life or death, and it was based on some, a lot of the uprisings at the time that were happening. This is made out of steel and glass, and pretty much I'm printing photographs on top of steel. This is more like a self-portrait. And this, one, this piece was, with the piece itself, it's almost meant to be like a book. So it opens up like a book and it has glass. Um, glass has the pages. But the photograph itself, um, for me, it was a question about using a photograph from Mississippi or from the Niger. Um, the Negro World is based on Marcus Garvey's paper, but I remember going throughout the islands and people would talk, you go to the churches and people would talk about inside the churches were made like from the bottom of ships. And so basically you have a ship within the, uh, that glass house right there. And this piece is called Space is a Place. It's, um, I go back to those favorite um, individuals that were musicians that I like a lot. And you know, Sun Ra and then Thelonious Monk. And when Thelonious Monk would get up and play music, and whenever he feel good, he starts spinning in a circle. And I thought that was interesting. It reminded me of like a whirling dervish. And so that's what this piece is based on. It's Duke Ellington. I always felt like his music was so perfect and clean and beautiful. And I didn't really understand or see any imperfections in his music. But then also I have like the Great Wall of Zimbabwe. That's a photograph that's at the top. And the wall looks so pristine and perfect. But when you look at it real close, it's, it's off, but it's perfect. So this is a bad photograph. But this is a piece that I recently installed at the, um, the Davis Museum at Wellesley, and um, it's called Wimber Coast. And basically, I use like 400 sets of piano keys that make waves, and the piano keys turn into waves. And then um, in the corner, you have like that shell, and that shell is basically playing the sounds of me dropping piano keys as I'm installing the piece. And the shell act, acts as if as an amplifier. But this piece is uh, based on Katrina, uh, the storms that have been happening, things that happened in Japan, um, based on all those different incidents and thinking about music and culture and 
thinking about also remember as a kid going fishing with my father and going so far out that we couldn't see land and feeling so small. Um, it's about chaos, but it's about calm. It's about being uh, far from being minimal, but then at the same time being minimal. Uh, this is a heart. And heart for me was the blues, blues music, jazz, blues, blues, pool man, pool man, trains. Um, it's a combination of all those things, but um, yeah, blue heart. And this was an installation where the heart and these objects were all within the same space. They were meant to operate off each other. The one piece with the Mende mask, I used the Mende mask from the museum collection. You see the reflection in the glass across, but then there's also a photograph of the actual Mende mask on the piece on the left-hand side. And so they all operate as mirrors, and I made my version of a Mende mask that's in the middle. Um, and they all operate off each other. You can kind of see the reflection inside the glass of the actual. And that piece is called Tricky. It's more like a self-portrait. I keep doing self-portraits every once in a while. And this is something that was more recent. I'm almost there. I think this is probably like the last one or two slides. Um, this one's called Levitate, and it's based on magicians and the idea of that magician. and those shows, and so the boat floats out maybe about three feet away from the tarp. The tarp itself is sewed in the different, um, uh, different symbols, and I'm looking at the different symbols throughout, I don't know, from Haiti, um, Veve drawings to, um, you know, things from Nigeria to Cuba, uh, to metalwork from blacksmiths in southern parts of the United States, um, one in particular, Philip Simmons. I was looking at a combination of all those things. And that's a donkey. And that's, my, that's something I'm working on now. And the donkey is wrapped up. And I'm trying to, I'm doing it about, um, about the Civil War. And that's it. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry if I took too long. All those materials. Uh, well, my favorite art supply store is an antique shop. And I like to go to, and me and my wife, we love to go to antique shops. Um, and, you know, that's where I find a lot of those. I go to, old, I go to um, you know, surplus stores. Um, yeah, I kind of stopped going to an art supply store. I don't do it as much. But yeah. Do you get frustrated when someone don't comprehend what your what story you're trying to give? You know, um, actually, no. I, you know, I feel I feel like uh, blessed in many ways to be able to make art. Uh, I probably my priorities are probably not necessarily people outside of my family. Sometimes I just think about having that conversation with them. And then at the same time, I just believe you make these things so personal that they become universal. So it's like my story is your story. It's all story. You know, at the end of the day, we're all human. And we're a part of that same race. And so I think about all those different things. Um, and making my work, I almost feel like as if I'm a, there's a vessel and I go through it. I mean, I am, I'm just a vessel. And the, the information, the things that I'm relaying in my work is something that I'm pretty much thinking about sharing it with family, friends. Um, and it came before me, so all I do is try to throw it out the best way I can. For the future, you know what? I 
think that in my work, I think that when I come to a space of peace, is like I'm real fascinated with outer space for some reason. I'm, I'm real fascinated with the unknown. I, I want to know about things I don't know about. I don't want to get preoccupied with human beings because there's something about that things are not right here and I don't want to be spend the rest of my life dealing with that. I think I want to think about myself as a kid and as a kid sometimes you're so pure that you want to just your, your, your concerns are not about those people. Your, your concerns are about something else. Um, I think once I get to that space in my work, I will be happy. And I actually think I'm happy now, but I will really be in a place. So in terms of the future, that's where I'm trying to get to. know if I want the mic, I might start singing. Um, so my favorite piece was the one with the classical music. Um, I think it was printed in the background. Um, uh, I, can't, I can't remember the name of it. It was a castle. It was a um, castle that, that the Portuguese right. had. It was called Elmina, and it was off the coast of Ghana. My, my question about it is where, what um, was your inspiration behind it? Because everyone sees art differently. Right. And when I first saw it before you explained it, what I saw was the music of, of that place. Right. It was like the music notes were in the water and you could see that the song was the, the landscape. Right, right. And what was, your, like, yeah, what was your inspiration behind it? I always wanted to make a film. Mm -hmm. um, when, I went to, when I went to Senegal, I, I rented a fishing boat. I took a fishing boat and I asked this guy, I said, take me around the island, but then take me around the island, but take me to the door, no return, but take me leaving and coming away from the door, no return and coming back to it. And I, I'm basically creating a film with that. Those were notes for that piece. So what I basically, what I've been thinking about, one kind of music I listen to at four or five in the morning is like classical music. I like classical music. I'm thinking of that as a soundtrack. And so those were like, that's why I call it notes. And it's really my personal notes for that film. And I'm thinking about a way to do it. And so what you talk about a painful subject matter, I think that you deal with beauty. It can't all be pain. You gotta, you gotta go somewhere else with it. And so that's where, where my mind was in that piece. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Do you have the book? Mm -hmm. My book? Yes. Can you say something about your book? Oh, well, well I have a... <laughs> <laughs> I have a... Um, like well, I have a show with that, the name of it. <laughs> okay, the show is called... I mean, um, the book is called Memory is Medicine. And it was based on a show... I just had a show that opened in Atlanta this past summer. And me being in Atlanta, Atlanta was like home, and I, I never left. I went to high school there, went to elementary school, college. My, where I went to college was right across from the museum. And basically, I felt more like native son. So, the museum decided to do a show, and a show of about 40 works of mine. And the subject was really like my, um, the interest of my fascination with African art. So a lot of the show was really based around that, but it's also based on that relationship and that, that, that city that's forever growing. Um, and so it was very, it was a special moment for me. And I'm going around this about the book because the book came out of, out of that show. And it was more so, it felt more like a gift that was from the community that I grew up in. And from, from the institution to the people who got behind the show, to my wife, to my friends. I mean, it was just a mixture of all these things. And I, it's very rarely that that happens in an artist's career. And I felt gifted and blessed in a way because 
my parents were still alive and they had an opportunity. So I felt like it was more for that community and my family and those are people I went to art school with because a lot of times in museums and um, art can't really focus on the art that comes without out of those areas. And so that's what that was for me. And that book itself is just kind of gives somewhat of a, I don't know, it's like maybe a, a 15 year um, stretch between work. Um, but the book itself is called Memory is Medicine. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Did you ever find out who these people were? Do you know who they are? And some of the other photographs that I noticed in your work look like things that either you've taken pictures or you've gotten photographs from other places, like the, uh, the Duke Ellington picture. Where, where, do you, where do you get those photographs from? Do you know who these people are? Yeah, um, a lot of, I know, I know some of the photographs. I, I particularly picked the ones that I didn't know anything about. Part of it was because that I would never, those would end up be, being those photographs that you would someday see at an antique shop that they're just like wandering around and you're wondering like, who are these people? They're not connected to anybody. And for me, those photographs, um, I wanted to give them a life and respond to them actually as a subject matter. Um, and it felt better not knowing than knowing. If you know something, you gotta do it right. You gotta do it a particular way. But not knowing, I felt like it gave me a, a space to work with him. Um, the images of like the Duke Ellington, those are images that were taken from some of my albums. Um, and I like to collage in imagery. And so like the subject of photography, I like to jump into photography and see if I can run photography through sculpture. I wanna combine all the different practices. I kinda all see them as one anyway. Um, it's almost like music. There's all of these different types of music, but it's really music. It's a sound. It's, it's a universal thing. So what I do is try to twist the photograph and make a lot of, you know, make it do a lot of different things. I actually want to make the photographs and animate the photographs and make the old photographs' eyes blink and, and move and turn around and get up. And I, that's what I'm curious about. Oh, yeah. And it may be just a snippet of time. Oh, the bees were all around me and this came out of it. But I'm curious to hear if you, your personal history was rich in an oral tradition. Did you have family or friends that told you their stories or your stories and ancestry and things like that? If you have that also um, in your yeah, um, my grandparents in particular, they had a way of sharing and telling stories. Uh, my grandfather was more like a comedian in a way, but he was like a deacon. But he was the guy who built the church. He was also like the guy who had the, one of the best gardens, and he prided himself with that. He had a way in which he communicated with people. He used to work at Monticello at Thomas Jefferson's. He used to tell the story about the clock and the floor. He told me a story about, you know, and it was in the paper, was that one day it snowed. He was the last person there. He was locking everything up, and it snowed so bad, and it was like he couldn't get on the roads. The reporter said, Mr. Cole, so what did you do? Mr. Cole said, I went to bed. He jumped in Thomas Jefferson's bed and went to bed. <laughs> but he's that kind of person. <laughs> So those kind of things kind of inform me, and I think that humor is also very important in terms of talking about stuff. But there is a lot of information. I think that there are a lot of different things that are, like take for instance, the South is a laboratory for me. So I think that there's a lot of information throughout the South. Part of it for me personally deals with the African practices that I'm very fascinated with. I want to understand that side so I can go on and deal with other sides. Because in terms of my makeup, I have a lot of different types of people inside of me. So I go through one and I have to go through the one that has the least amount of information for me to work with and try to figure it out. Um, it's more like problem solving. So 
the storytelling part and the oral stuff has always been there. I mean, you know, I hear my mother, um, she every once in a while tells me something I didn't know, and she, then she acted like she told me it before. And so I carry in all those stories, but then also my friends tell me stories. And then also I tell a lot of truth, but then also there's a lot of fiction. I also like try to figure out ways to tell a story in a different way. Um, Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. To conclude, I, I just want to thank Red Cliff on behalf of RIT and um, you share with us your work and it's a gift. And we really appreciate it, the insights uh, and getting a sense of your practice and opening yourself up personally uh, with your work is really a gift. Yeah. So thanks for all that. So thank, thank you very much. Thank you. I don't know. I want to thank you for having me. It, it, it means a lot. I needed to get out of the studio, get out of my head. I'd like to thank my wife for also, you know, helping me um, do my work and keep saying. Um, but thank you. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, Radcliffe. Um, I would, I, I'm a note taker for those of you who know me, and not a great one all the time, but I wrote things like he's a deep thinker. Um, I wrote artist, painter, photographer. I wrote uses symbolic pieces, draws on his passions, wanted to know about his DNA as an artist and found it. Um, creating his own tin types, fascinating story. I am not a painter, I'm not a sculptor, I'm a terrible photographer, but I know what I like and what I saw today was awesome. I really enjoyed what I saw. Seeing your story and you telling your story is miles apart. You made it all, you brought it all together in one place for me, and I really, really appreciate it. So I would like to personally thank you, Radcliffe, for sharing your story through art with us today. I am sure that each one of us will take away something special that will help us better understand and appreciate the field of visual arts. I would once again like to thank the planning committee and our student ambassadors for all of their dedicated work on this event. And I would also like to recognize the sponsors for their support of this event. Of course, the College of Imaging Arts and Sciences, and I appreciate the support of our Dean, Dr. Lorraine Justice, Academic Affairs, the Division of Student Affairs, the Multicultural Center for Academic Success, Alumni Relations, the Center for Campus Life, the Office for Diversity and Inclusion, and the Center for Women and Gender. Secondly, I would like to mention, uh, we're always selling something around here, that the College of Imaging Arts and Sciences Gallery R event which is taking place this evening at the Dyer Art Center here at RIT. If you have not purchased your ticket, and they didn't tell me to say this, they are available for purchase at the door. The benefit begins at 5.30 this evening, and Norma Holland of Channel 13 will be the MC for this event. Radcliffe and his lovely wife, Victoria Rao, who you may have heard speak earlier today, are attending as guests of the college. And lastly, I would like to tell you that if you did not grab a cookie on your way in, please grab several on your way out. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your evening.